Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Personas. In this video, we're going to talk about four different ways to deal with sibilance in Studio One. Okay, if you found this video searching for how to deal with sibilance, you already know what the problem is. We'll get to that in just a second. If you just happened across this video and you're not entirely sure what sibilance is, sibilance is the S's and the T's of a vocal that during normal spoken word, they're what help you understand what's being said. But when you get into a recording environment where you use like a condenser microphone like this one that's fairly sensitive to S's and T's, and then you add things like EQ and compression, sometimes that sibilance can be accentuated in an unpleasant way. We don't want to get rid of sibilance entirely, but when it becomes a problem, it can really, it feels like it's chopping your face off. So I'm going to show you four ways to deal with sibilance, but first, here's a sample track that I recorded. <laughs> A little song that I wrote that has lots of S's in it. This is my super silly, seriously sibilant song, yeah. Gonna be completely honest, the hardest part of making this video was singing that A with a straight face and B correctly. So, <laughs> we made it. Right out of the gate, that's just the raw vocal. It sounds, it sounds fine. There's a little sibilance there. You can see the spikes here and here and a little bit there. This is my super silly, seriously sip. The sisses are getting a little bit loud, but and that's just the raw vocal. Let's add in fat channel and let's process this like we would uh, a lead vocal in a rock song, okay? Let me do that real quick. This is my super silly, seriously sibilant song, yeah. This is my super silly, seriously sibilant song, yeah. This is my super silly, seriously sibilant song, yeah. This is my super silly, seriously sibilant song, yeah. This is my super silly, seriously sibilant song, yeah. Hey, this is me jumping in after the fact. I'm editing the video and <laughs> I noticed something. Maybe you noticed it too. Um, I accidentally turned off the EQ. I turned it off, then I adjusted a bunch of knobs, which means didn't make any changes at all, and then the rest of the video is just without EQ. That's fine because the whole purpose of this was to show you how to deal with sibilance, but um, in case you're wondering if I ever turn a bunch of knobs and think I'm helping things when it's actually off, <laughs> I do. Okay. Back to the video. I like everything about that vocal. It's punchy, it's in your face, it's expressive, but those S's are just too much. I don't want to back off the compression because I like the way the compressor sounds on everything but the S's, and that's where de-essing can come into play. So the tool we need to deal with sibilance is called a de-esser. Just like the name suggests, it takes away the S's, or at least it tames them. Now, Studio One doesn't actually have a plugin called DSer, but you can use several of the different plugins inside of Studio One to create a DSing effect, and I'll show you how to do that. The first thing I would try, and occasionally this just works wonderfully, is just to use a regular EQ and use what's called a notch filter. So a notch filter is when you take an EQ, you do a big cut, and then you just turn the Q control as high as it'll go to create this very narrow notch. So what I'm gonna do is find the sibilant frequency, see if there's maybe one frequency that's especially annoying, find it by boosting, and then cut it out and see if that fixes the problem. This is my super silly, seriously sibilant song. Woo, found the frequency. Uh, let's pull that down. This is my super silly, seriously sibilant song. Benefits of this approach is it's very simple. You can see what's happening, and it does get the job done. The problem is it's a little, it made the vocal a little dark. This is my super, this is my super, this is my soup. And it only affected one part of the sibilant sound. It's actually a whole range of frequencies that are really part of what makes it sibilant. This sometimes works, especially if you want to take down some of those frequencies and the rest don't bother you. Um, but it's not the perfect solution. Occasionally this is right, but a lot of times I have to go try something else. And one of those something else's that I try is using the compressor 
plugin. One of the great things about Studio One, especially with version 5, is we've incorporated side chaining into any plugin with dynamics on it. This has been a part of this compressor plugin for many, many years, many, many versions. Here's how it works. First of all, you can come up here into the presets, and there is a deesser preset here, but let me show you how to build it just so you kind of wrap your head around how it works. First thing we do is we engage this side chain section down here, and we hit filter. And then we click listen, and we're going to listen to what's being filtered here. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, here's what we're hearing. This is my super silly, seriously sibling song. So we can see we're cutting the lows, cutting the highs. I just want to cut the lows until all I'm really hearing are the sibilant sounds. This is my super silly, seriously sibling song. General rule of thumb, it's going to be somewhere in the 3 to 5, 3 to 7K range. For female vocals, it tends to be a little bit higher. For male vocals, a little bit lower. So we're sitting at right around 4K. And for the most part, all we're hearing are the S's come through. That's what we want. That's what's going to trigger this compressor. Okay, the next thing we do, we disengage the listen function. Now we set up the actual compression. I'll set the attack to one millisecond, set the release to 10, and then I'll set the ratio as high as it'll go, make the knee flat, and then I'll pull this down, and we'll listen to see when it starts to kick in. This is my super silly, seriously sibling song. There you go. That did the job. So here's what's happening. The compressor is only listening to those high frequencies, but it's compressing the entire vocal. So you end up with the vocal being compressed only when I sing the letter S. This is my super silly, seriously sibling song. So the pros of this setup, it's really easy to do. You can dial it in exactly how you like it and then save that as your own preset because everybody's going to be a little different in how they want to dial it in. The downside of this approach is it is compressing the entire vocal. In this example, you don't really hear that too much, but in some examples that might create an audible sounding compression that you don't like. It's not just compressing the high frequencies, it's compressing all the frequencies. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it could be considered a disadvantage to this approach. Okay, approach number three is a little more complicated than the other approaches, but it's similar to using the compressor, only this time we're gonna use the multiband dynamics tool. Now, if you're using Studio One Prime or Artist, you don't have this plugin, it's only included with Pro. However, this compressor version works really well, so you still have that available to you. If you have multiband dynamics, let me show you how I set this up. For this one, I'll show you the preset that I use. This is the DSer preset that I've created. So it does a couple of things. If you're not familiar with multiband compressors, they're like having multiple compressors that only compress different frequency ranges. Right now I've got this one set up as a three band multiband dynamics. The first band goes from zero all the way up to 2K. The second band goes from two to 5K and the third band goes 5K and up. Here's what those three different groups sound like. This is my super silly series. So the middle band is more like a, it's not really for de-essing, that's for something else, I'll talk about that in a second, and the high band is really where the de-essing is happening, that's at that 5k and above range. 2 to 5k for me is where a lot of the, for lack of a better term, the eh sounds of a vocal can cut through, so a lot of times I like to use a similar process to take care of those when I sing a really loud E vowel sound. E, it comes through and can be extra loud in that one vowel sound. This allows me to fix that. So what I do is this bottom band is not doing anything. You'll notice the ratio is one to one. It's not compressing, it's just letting the audio through. Then these two other bands are set up the same way we had the other de-esser. One millisecond attack, 10 millisecond release, ratio as high as it'll go. And then all we do is we bring down the threshold until there's some compression happening and we listen to, to hear the sibilance go away. Okay, here we go. This is my super silly, seriously sibilant song. Now right now we're moving both of these together because this edit all relative is selected. If we deselect that, we can move both of these independently. This is my super silly, seriously sibilant song. This is my super silly, seriously sibilant song. This is my super silly serious. You hear how the S's are now right there at a volume that's normal as opposed to jumping out like they were before? This is my super silly. 
This is my super silly sick. And one of my favorite things to do, once I've put the de in place and I've tamed those high frequencies, then I can take something like a high shelf and I can give myself some air back in the vocal without risking bringing out that sibilance too much. This is my super silly, seriously sibilant song. Yeah. This is my super silly sir. You hear how the vocal is now brighter, but that sibilance is tamed. So we've kind of done a one-two punch. Sibilance comes in, we smack it down, then we take the smacked down high end and turn that up as a whole. So now it's more controlled and we can turn that up without having certain pieces of that high end jumping out and being too loud. Okay, the final way to deal with sibilance is to manually go in and adjust the waveform itself. Not my favorite approach, but in some situations it makes sense. It's really easy to spot sibilance. You just zoom in and you'll see this really spiky waveform. That's it, because it's higher frequencies. They're going to go up and down more often in a second. So if we listen to that right there, Sib right there, that's the sibilance. So I'm going to go in here. The old way I used to do it, and this is still a valid way to do it, is to go in like this to double click to separate, whoops, double click up here to separate the region. And then you can pull this down here to do clip gain right there. So we're adjusting the volume of just this clip itself. That works great, but there's another way that we can do that using a new feature in version five, which is clip gain envelopes. This does essentially the same thing, but the key difference is it doesn't separate uh, the audio into different pieces of audio. So I can move that down. You can see I'm adjusting it on the waveform level, but it's all still one region. It's not volume automation, it's actually adjusting the clip itself. And we have a few more parameters we don't really have when adjusting just the clip itself. We can do add some extra points here and have it go in and out a little more smoothly, and it sounds like this. So that S got turned down, and you can obviously come in and select things and adjust it up and down as needed to get the right sound. This is great if you have a vocal where the entire vocal sounds great, but there's one word or two or three words, just a handful where the sibilance is out of control, but the rest it sounds fine. Then just go manually adjust the sibilance on those words and call it a day. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. Not the most exciting of topics, but lead vocals are really important and sibilance becomes a Big challenge for a lot of people, so hopefully this gave you some tools to use on your next vocal mix. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, do the thing, and I'll see you in the next one. Shring. Meow. Whoop.